Um, yeah, what's up, guys? Happy Friday. What's up, Tribe Builders? Cole, we're live now. I'm here with Cole Gordon, uh, who went from being a sales uh, burnout sales rep to being a million dollar sales coach. Look at those guns. I love it. Uh, as always, ask questions along the way, whatever you want to learn from Cole. He went from Authority Accelerator to our seven figure CEO program. Has absolutely crushed it and is one of the most like just dedicated uh, uh, people and most like focused people person I know. I don't know how to talk today, but uh, that's what we're going to jump into. His story from burnt out sales rep to million dollar coaching business in less than a year. So if you guys have any questions on that, drop them down below. But Cole, thanks for being here, brother. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's let's get some questions rolling in the chat because we can just go freestyle and uh, help people. But where you want me to start off with just like the story of like how we met in San Diego and yeah. Uh, so first off, what what business do you do? You, uh, I just talked about that, so we don't have to do that. But yeah, start from the beginning. Yeah. Well, I mean, so now. You know, we have a we have two two main offers, you know, sales training and sales recruitment. So we help, you know, obviously train entrepreneurs, sales reps, anybody, sales teams, anybody wants to get better at sales. Um, we're really, really good at that. And then the other thing we do is we do recruitment and basically helping take an entrepreneur who's, you know, maybe been through a program like yours and who's on the calls, taking all the calls all day, every day, get off the phone and be able to recruit and hire, train, manage and lead a sales team or even a salesperson, just one, um, so that they can scale to multiple seven figures. So we help them find the person, hand them the proven closer, and then also give them all the processing systems. But didn't always start that way. Um, back in October, I so you know I, I had sold full time, had a really good experience and a, a great you know career. I guess you could say doing that. Sold for um, I think it was a total of four different companies. And every single one was the top producer. And so that's great, you know, and I, I really felt like I maxed that out as much as I possibly could. And like, I'm just the type of person, like I just always want more. Um, and so, you know, I felt like I had the the, ga the foot on the pedal as hard as it could go for like so, so long. And, you know, you just kind of like, you burn out, right? And I just felt like I was capped. So eventually I ended up leaving and I took a, probably about 45 days off and, Part of that was Brad Newman convincing me to go to San Diego for healing. You got to heal, brother. So that's that's what he was saying. You got to come out here and heal. So healing here, bro. So I was like, all right, whatever. And, and we came out, and then I met you the first day. I was there. I found out we went to the same college, but we were never never knew each other. And then um, you know, I started telling you kind of like what I had in mind, but I hadn't done anything. Like I had, hadn't done a, hadn't made a single post, hadn't done anything. And um, dude, you were real encouraging and like gave me some good insights. So I was very impressed. And I've, I've been, like keep in mind, like I'm not just like, you know, some random dude who just decided that, like I, I've been through a lot of coaching programs, right? So I've, I've kind of seen a lot of stuff, even at this point. So I was like really, really impressed. And then uh, I think we had a conversation. And I was just like, you know, we were hanging out at the beach and I was like, yeah, dude, you just want to take my credit card and help me out for, uh, like launching, launching basically my, my sales training offer. And so you took my credit card. I paid in full like a good boy. And then uh, basically we, we, we worked on a couple of things. So mapping out the offer, I feel like that was like, you know, I already had it. We just kind of like whiteboarded it really fast. And then, um, you know, mapping out the delivery, which we can talk more about. I, I think that's something we really should cover is a big portion of how I do my delivery today is, is based on what I learned from you. And then um, we also, you know, mapped out basically the Facebook group. And I was kind of like, I think I was maybe borderline on doing it or not. And you're like, no, nah, you definitely need to do it. And good thing I did because like I get feedback every day from people now saying like it's the most valuable group that they're a part of on Facebook. So yeah, kudos to you on that. Cause I just, you know, I feel like I had the right, like, you know, because I get in there and I just kind of like just help help out and provide value and just I provide leadership on my content. But um, I just needed a little nudge to uh, to go do that. So, you know, we mapped out the launch. Um, that went fairly smoothly. Did 70K in two days. <laughs> and I did, um, I put my head down, built out, you know, it was a, like it was a beta launch, right? So 
after that, I, I, you know, I really put my head down. I went full bore creating um, the most in-depth sales course that, that I've ever seen. I've taken a lot of programs. So it's just super complete product, which it's so, I'm so happy I did that back then because I would have no time to do that. Literally impossible. Because I took, I took so much time building out a great product. So mm -hmm. thankfully I did that. And then, um, you know, once I got to the point where that was built, it was about January-ish. Then I just kind of relaunched. I had the formula, so I just did that over again. You know, I souped up, did a few things differently. Did uh, 274 or something. Um, yeah, it was 274 in January. 74,000 in January. Yeah. yeah, in two weeks. So, and, you know, I could probably could have done more. I just like, after two weeks, just go to them. And then, um, then after that, I think I did like, you know, I kind of took February off. So not off, but like, I just did like delivery. So mm -hmm. I think I did like 50 new revenue in February, February and then just had collections coming in. And then after that, every single month afterwards, we've done at least 100K. Um, contracted in, in mostly over 100 so this past month was 154 cool. mm -hmm. and yeah. so yeah no, no plans on slowing down either so um yeah man we can go wherever we want from there but that was uh that was the journey yeah i love it dude it's it's been really really cool to see because it's not just like you're a really good salesperson but you're also really good at implementing the structure and uh, systems, getting the systems into place, like getting David into place into your business so you could fulfill more and get better results for your clients. Yeah. And now you have, uh, you were saying like an 80% testimonial rate yeah. because it's all about having that world-class delivery, which you're, you're able to do and you set up your client success meetings with your client success team. And that's really what's generating just crazy, amazing results along with the, uh, along with the, the course area that you have for both yep. of your programs is uh, like, I'm part of Cole's program too, second to none, um, best sales training that I've been through. Uh, and my team is in it too. It's really fucking good. Um, yeah. But yeah. What a, we whole, I was going to say we have a whole course on the uh, the sales team side and all the SOPs and everything. I actually just dropped version two of that on Sunday. So it's all redone and it's uh, it's really it's really strong. But one thing you were, you were telling about with delivery is, uh, and we were talking about this before we hopped on. So one of my, like, what makes me really, really happy, like some of the best compliments I've gotten from, from several multiple clients, oh, we might just be me live here. I think Andrew. No, I'm here. Well, you're back. Oh my God. I was like, what happened? So one of the best compliments that I've ever gotten, and I've gotten this from multiple, you see my messy bed in the background. I got to like, got to get that out of the frame. But one of the best things that um, I've gotten from clients is that like not only, cause we have kind of a hybrid sort of done for you, done with you sort of offer. So one of the best things I've gotten from clients is that like people will say, it's not just the, um, like obviously a great program for the sales side of things, but it's also like the best client experience that they've ever had in any investment that they've ever made, which is like crazy. You know, I'm like, Oh my God, like that's such a great compliment. And a, a lot of that comes down to really like how you were giving me some insight on how to structure delivery in the very, very beginning. And there's a few things I won't, you know, go crazy in the details. I don't want to give away all the secrets, but you know, there's a few things that you taught me that, you know, just very simple things that nobody else is doing really. And I still do those to this day in terms of how we deliver and offer support. And, um, you know, people time and time again say, you know, it's like the support that we have is like second to none. And um, it's part of the reason our testimonial rate is, is so good, you know? So, um, and, and, and get this, a lot of my clients almost, um, not almost all of them, but especially the ones who um, invest in like sales training because they're a little bit more in like the, the not beginner, but like 20 to 50K a month range. Um, a lot of them change their fulfillment to how I do it now. Basically, they model our fulfillment model, which I model for you. So, um, 
that helped a lot. And then the other thing as well is um, in terms of fulfillment is how you basically organize. Because most of my team is on, because I, I do all the marketing and sales because it's like my natural skill set and I actually enjoy it. So most of my team members are on the client fulfillment side. And how we structure our client success department and SOPs and meetings and stuff, I got from you and Avery. And that's just been huge. Like we just don't have, like we're so on the ball with clients to where it's like, I know more, um, I, I just like, I'm like, I'm more proactive about their situation and fixing their problems than almost they are. And that's not like a knock on them or anything. It's just because like, we're so like, you don't let anybody slip through the cracks. And so mm -hmm. it's the exact model you guys use it through Airtable, but um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have a different different software, but same process, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So it really, really helped as well, man. Yeah, that's awesome. So you've seen inside of other companies, what do you think the difference is between how we teach delivery and how other coaching businesses teach delivery for their coaching business? Well, most don't. So, I mean, that's, that's the probably number one thing, you know, <laughs> is, is most, most of them don't teach like actually how to, um, like they might teach how to package on the front end, which is really important, don't get me wrong, like that's killer, but not necessarily on how to like build SOPs and just um, teach delivery, you know? So, I mean, you guys are also very open, like here's what we're doing for our company, is like you guys can model this, and I think that's, valuable because it's one of the best ways people learn mm -hmm. and so um yeah man i mean most most companies like don't really focus on like actually how to deliver and get results from your clients at all you know and that's not necessarily a, a bad thing like i think like you know it's, it's good to have stuff you can invest in just for marketing or sales or, or whatever else but like you know, the, the whole point is to deliver on the promise that you made on the front end of the client. So if you can't do that, you know, it doesn't really work out for you, really well for you. And like part of the reason like our delivery, um, that being sound, like a benefit of that is we get tons of referrals. Like almost the majority of my business last month was referrals, which is mm -hmm. that launch in January is a record month. So it's like, you know, if you really have that down and people are, your reputation is good. You can never get your reputation back. So if your reputation is good and um, your client fulfillment's good, your testimonials are good, you know, that's it's a huge, huge asset for your company. Yeah. So um, just the fact that I mean you address it and do it, like your guys' systems are like I'm still not don't have near as many systems as you. But just, you have a lot. But <laughs> but like even just a little bit is like helped me. I've been like, man, that's like I'm, I'm, so I'm laughing at the comments right now because yeah, um, every time everybody thinks we're twins. Uh, we just went to the same college and grew up in the same state, but we didn't know each other until this last year. Um, but yeah, I think we have pretty good beards. So I'll take that as a compliment. Yes, sir. Uh, good to see you, Amir. Good to see you, Mark, Alvin, Nick. Uh, drop the drop comments down below, guys, um, and uh, questions. I mean, drop some questions down below for Cole. He's had a crazy, amazing journey inside of Authority Accelerator and Seven Figure CEO over the past year. Um, and when you were you 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 quit your job uh, as a sales rep, um, and then you had this period of kind of just relaxing, like kind of getting your energy back. And then you started your coaching business, but there were a lot of different routes that you could go. What, what drew you to Tribe of Buyers and drew you to us to go the route with starting with organic and then moving to paid ads and starting your coaching business this way? Well, well the, the honest answer, man, is that like um, basically, Brad Newman was working with you. Yeah. And I was like, well, I was like, still is. Yeah, yeah. Still, well, still, yeah, still is. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like, you know, his Facebook group was sick. And it still is, right? It's like, it, it is really, really good. And he does a great job. So I was like, well, shit, like, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. You know, like, that was the main thing is you just had results in my industry. And I was like, and I, you know, I just know I can, like, when I make investments, I can, I make yeah. them work. Right. So it's just a no brainer for me. But like the main thing was um, I just saw how, you know, you would help people in my industry in the past. And I was like, well, 
if, if he can make what I was making full time selling um, net income, like take home, working like with way less clients, less hours a week than I was where I was working like crazy hours. Right. So I was like, man, if like he can just if he, if he can do that, I can do that. And then like, mm-hmm. you know, that, I didn't have like, I mean, I obviously had big goals, but like, even in the beginning, I was like, man, if I can just replace my sales income without having to work like 80 hours a week, that would be great. You know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I did that within two days of launching my business. Right? So. <laughs> yeah. That's epic. Um, uh, so if you had to distill it down to one thing, what has impacted your life the most inside of Seven Figure CEO? Distill it down to one thing. I mean, you know, just the nudge to do the Facebook group is huge, which we're, we're in the process of going to be scaling that. Um, mm-hmm. I just finished out actually the uh, asset during yesterday, but going to be in the process of scaling that. So like, I just think right now, um, and it'd be really exciting to see how we kind of build this stuff out and how it develops. I think it'll, both of us will, will even get it more sophisticated than it is, but like really just, I mean, you can scale a Facebook group with paid traffic. And if your sales team's dialed in the right way, um, you can do like several million dollars a year just out of the group. Mm-hmm. So it's just such a better funnel, I think, for most businesses than the direct to call. Not the, no, can that work? Absolutely works for people all day, every day. It's just that, you know, either way that, that you, your follow-up game is going to be so much better when you have that group as a container and like a crock pot for a lot of leads, your lead quality is way off the roof. So I think the, the biggest impactful thing was like building that asset. Cause that's what it is. It's like, it's, it's an asset, mm-hmm. it's distribution, you know? So I'm going to work towards scaling that. And then like you also very early on told me, you're like, dude, you need to collect emails from all these people. And I was like, okay. Like, and I hate, like, I'm terrible at email marketing, not because I can't write copy. I just like fail to like, I hate at logging into active campaign. I can write copy fine. Just hate logging into active campaign. So, um, but, but the thing is like people, a lot of people hate on like Facebook group or organic or all this stuff because they're like, well, you know, Facebook owns your business. And it's like, maybe, but like the point is you got to get the data and once you have the data, so if you collect all the emails and entering into the group, then you can basically, you know, let's say Facebook groups, just like they just got rid of for some reason, which would never happen, but I'm not saying never, but not going to happen anytime soon. Um, but let's just say that happened. Well, you could redirect that all that data that you've built a relationship with to a different platform or upload it into a retargeting list or, you know, so, as long as you're collecting the emails and the data, having that Facebook group on the front end is is so powerful. So I kind of just rambled in the circle there a little bit, but biggest impactful thing was just the nudge, nudge to do the group. I was like, man, should should I even do a group? Is it worth it? Yeah, <laughs> it gives you a lot of fucking. Yeah, if you I remember I was sitting in the sitting uh, in a place in Cal, Brad's place in California, and you're like, make your group now. So got, yeah. got that up and going. Yeah, that was awesome. And it's, uh, I just found out the other day that two people uh, that met in the group and then met at Trevor Byers Live got married. So, or they're engaged now. So it's no. more than just money. You can help people connect with the loves of their life. Yeah, uh, so start a Facebook group. Yeah. Um, so, we have, a co- uh, we have a question here, really, really good question. But uh, if you guys have any more questions for Cole, uh, drop them down below. Um, and also, dude, huge shout out for you for donating your sales trackers uh, inside of uh, Seven Figure CEO. Cole is an amazing program. And I saw his, we, we adopted his sales trackers for sales closers, setting projections, and sales setters. And he was nice enough to give them to our seven figure CEO clients and is the, the best tracker uh, that we've ever used. Um, so huge ups to you on that um, and basing your business decisions off of data instead of just feeling. But um, uh, so for anybody that is on the fence for seven figure CEO 
And in the situation that you were in before you joined Seven Figure CEO, what would you say to them? Yeah, the uh, yeah, the, the Nike thing. Just, just do it. You know, <laughs> but like, seriously, most people. Um, I mean, I've invested in my business so aggressively. You know, like you know, it's like there's been some times where when we were living together. You're like, dude, like, you gotta stop. That. You know, but like I invest so aggressively, and like more often than not. It, it's just always going to be, it's, it, there's always value you can get from it. As long as you're going to show up, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be a good investment, especially if you sell, you know, high ticket services. So obviously like do it, like don't let, especially if you're, you're just starting off. Um, you know, it, it's like, if you're just starting off, like don't let fear get in the way. It, it's definitely going to not just ROI, but really like, a lot of times like a investment like this can be the catalyst to where like you start going a different direction and like, everything just starts working and falling in close once you do. If you're maybe somebody's a little bit more experienced and you invest in some coaching programs before and you're like, oh well like is this gonna be worth it? Is this gonna be like everything else? I will say like your program is well first of all, there's just there's a like definitely the content's gonna be different because there's so much depth, right? You you have like you know, more than what most people could probably go through. And it's very like out of heart, you know, focus on what you need at certain points. And on the operation and fulfillment side, I personally haven't seen any offers that go into it to the degree that, that yours have, mm-hmm. right? In terms of actually how to fulfill for your clients, how to operate, like you've removed yourself from your business. Um, and I've told you like a million times, like you have the infrastructure of a business that I've seen like at, you know, really, really high levels, and even, even in just your revenue, which is, Really, really cool because your client is also as well. So, if you're a high level business owner, there's definitely value you can get from it. The ROI community you're going to get is uh, a no brainer. And then, if like you're newer, like don't let fear get in the way. Um, it's just a, it's just a no brainer, I think. So, go talk to Mitchell and he'll uh, he'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, cool, dude. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. We have some questions here. But if you guys want to be hang out with Cole, hang out with a bunch of other six and seven figure business owners and scale your business to a million dollars in revenue, then a million dollars profit. Uh, hashtag seven figure CEO down below right now. We only have a certain amount of spots every single month because we're very hands on in the onboarding process and map out what your next 90 days are going to look like and nail down your offers and what exactly you need to focus on, which takes a lot of one-on-one attention. So uh, we only have a limited amount of spots. So hashtag seven figure CEO down below and we'll get right over to you with more details. Um, But Cole, we have some good questions here. Um, And my phone just died, so I don't know the name here. It just says Facebook user. But um, how's it? How's the transition been from being in sales to moving to coaching? Not just the revenue part, but the highs and the lows of coaching. Yeah, I'm interested in terms of what that person means by highs and lows. Um, I don't really know what, in terms of that, but like the transition overall. Well, you know, on the sales side, interestingly enough you know, it actually, I got better at sales um, because like it forced me to get clear, especially with how in depth I made my product and how systematized I made everything. Um, it really forced me to get clear on like what I was doing and, and why it was working. And it also, what really also helped me is seeing like, once I got all of that out there, like teaching people, teaching people what it, you know, certain things stick, certain things apply better than other things. And you're just able to see like what makes the biggest impact, how people learn the best. And and that's been able to help me be a better coach and trainer of sales. But even just the the process of like thinking through all of the things I was doing across 3000 sales calls in the past couple of years was like, that was very, very helpful, you know? And it just, it really helped me get better at sales. Um, So, you know, funny enough. That's just, that was an added benefit to that. In terms of the other things, you know, just for being full-time, like with sales, you got to always be on. It, the beauty of it is that, and I, I still recommend it for like, you know, if you were just starting off and you don't really have any offer, like you were just looking for a, a good way to 
build a skill. Like it's such a great um, opportunity, you know, like I'm glad I started off with that. I'm, I'm super thankful because I built an amazing skill. It's going to last me for a lifetime. Built a lot of confidence doing that. I was able to make upwards of thirty, forty thousand dollars a month net income. You know, it's truly amazing. Um, and like the thing about that though is you always got to be on. Like your your energy has to be high. You have to be very, very self aware of that stuff. And it has to be the same in business as well. But it it isn't as taxing. You know, like for me, like yesterday I wrote a like twenty five page report. That's all I did the entire day. Um. That's it's just like that, that was taxing in a different way than like six sales calls a day every single day, six days a week, you know. So um, th that that was pretty refreshing in terms of the transition. Doesn't necessarily mean building a business is easy, easier. It's not like you got to deal with a bunch more shit and more responsibility. You got to be proactive. You got to you know all this stuff, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's been a really fun and empowering thing. Like, I, I'm, I'm glad that I obviously do. So that's yeah. my answer to that question. Yeah, and I think I can answer it too because I was doing sales in Chicago for Microsoft Dynamics and Salesforce, making 50 cold calls per day and just slaving away at that. Um, and the transition to becoming a business owner is – and a, a coach, you're just using different parts of your brain. When when you're doing sales, it's kind of the same thing. And like Cole said, right. you just always got to be on, always got to be on, always got to be on. And with uh, being a business owner or being a coach, you can kind of use those different areas, especially your creativity um, when it comes to building your business, which yeah. you don't really have. You're just a sales rep or a sales setter. Yeah, hundred percent. Here's the thing: I was like, you know, if you master the things that I teach and develop over time in terms of like managing your energy and your state and your routines and your standards and all of this stuff that's very uh, known and common in the sales world, if you master that, a great way to master it's through sales, and then you bring that into business, and you're just going to outperform so many of these business owners. It's like not even close, right? Your productivity, your output. How you're showing up with your team, just totally next level. So it's almost like, like they say, like when I wrestled and did football in high school and stuff, especially wrestling, they always used to say like, wrestling's so great because it teaches you like discipline and all of these like intangible things and these lessons that you take on later in life. And it's almost like sales is um, is one of those things. It's like it, 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 it's competitive. It's like the sport of business. And you learn a lot of great lessons and develop yourself and increase your standards and how you show up. And, and really, once you master that and you get great at that, it really sets you up to transition into business in a really cool way and have a huge advantage that a lot of business owners have. So. Yeah, agreed. And it totally forces you to manage your energy because if you can't manage your energy as a sales rep, you're screwed. Like yeah. you're destined for burnout, being yeah. burnt out quick. Yeah, and it, and, it, and it teaches you to increase your standards too. You can't influence somebody to live up to their higher standards if you're, if you're not living up to your own. Same yeah. thing with your team. It's like you can't influence your team to hold accountable to their highest standards if you're not showing up and living up to your own. Mm -hmm. So it is a really good skill. Like, you know, once you have it down, like you just know, like you can go make money and, and, and Anytime you want. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do, right? doesn't mean you know there's there's next steps of evolution to get off the phones and not be selling all the time but it's good to have us so i think the biggest hit of this interview were was our beards so <laughs> fabian alberto uh pranav it's it, well, apparently we're twins and we, we have really good beards so i'll take it yeah yeah so, some guy yesterday was like, not yesterday, it was like last Thursday. He was like, who's that guy who, uh, he's really smart, has a Facebook group, looks just like you. Like, <laughs> Andrew? He's like, I like that guy. It was, uh, it was one of my mentors, Travis. He was like, oh, oh Travis, I, yeah. Yeah, he was like, that guy's so smart. Dude, like, Travis came through our uh, SLO funnel for messenger sales. 
he bought our forty-seven dollar master class, and, so, and then I we had uh, we had one of our setters give him a call and hit him up. It was funny. I don't think he picked up for the call, but oh man, dang it! Yeah, um, that's funny, man. He's a uh, he's a messenger master, so good. good, good yeah. to see he's a legend. Um, cool, dude. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the kind words. Keep the beard strong. Uh, and I'll see you inside of the Seven Figure CEO Facebook group, brother. Absolutely, man. Don't forget, guns. Um, even though we're in quarantine, guys, you got to keep lifting. Keep finding ways to get strong. So, uh, yeah. agree. I I'm just went on. back to the gym for the first time two weeks ago. Yeah. Keep those guns strong. See you guys.